7 December 2024 will be a decision making for this country. We're going to be voting for presidential and parliamentary candidates who have chosen to serve this country. But even before we get to that, this weekend, primaries will be ongoing and the NDC and NPP are expected to put in effort to ensure that the right person represent the party eventually when we make it to the 7th of December 2024 general elections. Before that, this weekend, the NPP will be going to the polls with their primaries and uh, many of those who have decided to step in and uh, be voted for so they can make a change in their various communities and constituencies as the man that I'm about to talk to. Mr. George Sapong is uh, an NPP parliamentary aspirant hoping to actually be in charge of the constituency that is known as Fija Kwabre South. He's my guest here on the show and uh, he's been, going to be joining us via Zoom. Let me go to Zoom and see if indeed he's there and then we can begin our conversation. Good morning if you can hear me, uh, George Sapo. George, can you hear me? Hello? Okay, so George, if you can hear me, unmute your microphone so I can also hear you. All right, so unmuting the microphone has always been a challenge to many people, and I'm sure George is no different. But when he's able to do that, uh, we're going to get in touch with him, and then we'll look at the situation. So the Cabaret District is a former district that actually was located in the Ashanti region of Ghana. Now, originally, it was created as an ordinary district assembly in the 1988. Now, it was also created from the former Cabaret uh, south and Cobra North and East and West, and it was the Setra District actually. And it was a council until the western part of the district was split off to become the southern portion of uh, Fija Quabre District. Now, that was done on the 1st of November 2007, effectively uh, 29th of February 2008. Now, uh, while remaining the portion, it has since been officially renamed as Quabre East District, which was elevated to the municipal district. As Assembly uh, status to become the Cabaret East Municipal District on the 1st of November 2017. And that also took effect on the 5th of March 2018. Uh, this morning, uh, the District Assembly, actually located in the northern part of uh, the Ashanti region and uh, Mampontang as its capital, has also uh, boasted of uh, a place that they call the Epijase uh, Cabaret uh, South. And uh, the certain uh, MP is actually an NPP and uh, that is William Adu. Uh, he's uh, also seeking to actually, you know, retain that position. But of course, I will come with uh, this weekend's uh, decision making uh, when the delegates actually step up to decide who exactly uh, will be fit to actually take care of that constituency. But don't forget that it doesn't end there. So once the primaries are done, there's a bigger task ahead, which is the main general elections that will happen on the 7th of uh, December. Now, it means that whoever that is uh, taken, uh, you know, by the delegates' decision to actually represent the party would have to face the opposition party. So if any of them, uh, you know, uh, after the primaries on Saturday, is able to go past uh, that level, it means that person will have the responsibility of working extremely hard to be able to beat the opposition party, the NDC, who, of course, would also have someone representing them eventually. Uh, let me go back and see on Zoom if we, we, can, we can communicate with him. Uh, very well. So we're still trying as much as possible to con uh, connect with him. But our uh, most photogenic couple, uh, you know, for Valentine is still running. So this is the simple thing that you have to do. All you have to do is to take a picture with your partner. Uh, the picture has to be very, very solid. Uh, it has to be very intriguing, you know, and tell us the story behind that picture. So you can share with us a note of, you know, how that picture happened, you know, something very special, and then you send it to us. What we're going to do is that we're going to put it on social media, and then the most picture with the most engaging, you know, maybe we can have about 200 of them. So 
the, the first five or first two or first three or whichever one that has the most engagement, we're going to actually call you guys. And then try and, you know, do some question and answers a bit. And then if you're able to go through it, the next stage is available. And trust me, there are a lot of prizes that we're given, you know. I, I understand there's going to be some treats at some spa and some things. And our 12 Days of Valentine is also going to be a part of that. So we'll put you in that series as well. You know, it's going to be engaging. It's going to be exciting. You, you don't want to miss out on that. So tell your partner, do that photo shoot and then you send it to us, okay? And let us know the story behind that. And uh, we're good to go. Uh, let me see if we can have uh, George on now. George, good morning, if you can hear me. Good morning, my brother. How are you? I'm very well. Yourself? Uh, I'm great. I'm great. And I'm sure um, looking at the way I dress, I'm sure you as well, like everything else in the country. So we give thanks to you almost again. It's great to be on here on this big platform and to so have the chance to reach out to my people. So I'm grateful for the opportunity. Awesome. Uh, are you in the constituency at the moment? Uh, yes, I'm in the constituency. But this morning I'm doing a two uh, media tours. After which I have serious opportunities. Tomorrow I'm meeting my um, constitutional executives and director of Ford Majors. And um, uh, from there we'll do a number of activities as well. So, yes, uh, around this time we keep moving. And it's, it's work, work, work on the 27th one. The last ballot is counted and the chaplain is declared parliamentary candidate of the Fijal Parliament South in Christmas. Mm. How are the people of uh, Fijal Kwabre South doing this morning? We are great, we are great, we are great, we are great. And if you look back to the um, happenings from last year, we realized that we have some uh, challenges with our economy, the interest rates were rising, the inflation was on the high. Now things are relatively stable. So it's the same in every part of the country, and except for this country, it's no exception. People are going about their businesses, people have and the sound money to do what they have to do. So um, yes. Let's keep moving. Okay. Great. So, for starters, if I'm meeting George Sapon for the first time and I ask who is George Sapon, what, what will be your answer to me? Okay. I think that's uh, quite a big question because whenever I'm at this person, I don't know where to start from. <laughs> whether I start from a very humble um, beginning mm. or whether I see a beginning from my um, political experience. So, um, I'm a 34 year old. Very energetic, very exuberant, very hardworking, very skillful, knowledgeable, and intelligent. And I started my education from the West Coast, I did practice school, moved all the way to Kenya to high school, to Pampa Carlos, and then TNEST. I worked with the Ministry of Information, I worked with the Office of the President, I worked with the Ministry of National Security as an analyst, and then um, time, I'm on my way to Parliament. I've also paid my dues to my party. If you come to the Tijapa base, so as constituency, I serve the party as a party and pay for the youth wing. To come to Ashanti region, I serve the party at the regional level as a pay for for entities branches in the various sectors which is strategically successful. If you go to national, I'm a member of the national communication team for the party, and also I'm also the vice chairman for the MPP national students committee, which is um, a group that uh, focuses on how we can leverage our resources yeah. and intellect to ensure that we get more users for the party. And so at all points, I am doing my best to ensure that um, the elephants take the power will take the aid and we're going to contribute to the development of this country. And in so doing, I think that this must be a clarion call to all persons who consider themselves weak. When we talk about democracy, it is a um, majority rule. Now, if you take a look at the demographics of our country, you realize that the youth bracket, which is from 18 to about 40 years, uh, accounts for no less than 70% of the country's population. Now, if we are in the majority, then just like President I think probably said in Vancouver, if you want decisions being made to affect you positively, ensure that you are at that table where the decisions are being made. And so for me, as a youth, if I want things to be done in favor of the youth, I should make sure that where the decisions are being made, where the laws are being made, where the discussions are happening, I am represented and I'm representing my people. That's one of the main reasons why I'm on my way to Parliament. Mm. Just, for, just to pass in uh, your, your, your age to the uh, political achievement that you have had over the period, it means that, you know, you, you've done some really um, good work, you know, to, to be able to make that decision to go to Parliament. Uh, you, 
why the decision now to, to move into that space? And you are right to say that I've achieved a lot as a young person. I've said before, I'm really proud of what I've been able to do so far. Mm. And I, I like to say that um, I've been blessed uh, by the young people. Mm -hmm. And I consider it a blessing to be able to do this much of it and spend that age of mine. Uh, but when, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, there's a philosopher who says, it's something must be done. If you don't do it now, when will we do it? Mm. There's one of my bosses uh, who has uh, trained me over the years, I called Mr. Sunemi. I appreciate him so much for how he's been supported over the years. And he's the national security coordinator for our country. He's a little over 40 years, a young person. Now, there's something that he's always said that until the job is done, nothing else matters. And you want the job. The job is ensuring that my people can go to bed safe and sound. The job is ensuring that the poor boy in Odisha can go to school and have some form of assurance that his destiny will not be questioned. The job is ensuring that my party people have a candidate that they can believe in. The job is ensuring that I get to the ground, I increase the voice of my party, and I contribute to the quota of the national the fact that we can bring the age. You know, the MPP has its nationality region, and the Sijapa Bay South is the fifth largest constituency by vote. And so, if I'm able to leverage all resources and all energy, uh, it goes to the greater good of the party. Now, I am in to serve my country, my party, and my people. And so whatever I have to do to ensure that these goals are achieved simultaneously, and that is what I am ready to do. Over the years, I have been tried and tested out, and um, risen to the occasion of many times. And then um, it's incumbent that if my party people endorse me or they endorse my candidature, well, I believe that I'll be able to serve them diligently, I'll be able to serve them with commitment, and I'll be able to serve them uh, with some grace and candor. So my brother, if you ask, I think mm. that the time to go to Parliament is now, because this is the era of the youth. This is the era where we became, if you recall, um, our very venerable former president, John Adikinti, who is also from Central is my own mother institution. He was uh, as head of the Ashanti region, a school to speak like in modern day Ashanti regional minister, when he was barely 28 years. A little after 30 years, he was made deputy uh, foreign affairs minister. And we all know, know the role that he came. And it continued to so became president, and we have seen the results. And currently, if you look at the likes of Honorable Abu Dinapo, Honorable Apong Soma, Samuel Fu, Henry Nanabu Ashe, my own good brother, and a number of our young appointees, you realize that young people can exceedingly do well when we give them the opportunity to do so. Even if the Bible tells us that the young people shall dream and we shall see vision. So as a young person, it is my duty biblically to be visionary, to see beyond what others are seeing now. And so for me, I think that it's the time to do the right things. We have mm. seen so many young people do it and do it right. And for me, who has been able to go through some form of training at various levels of my growth, I feel that when I'm reading the house, I'll be able to do well for the interest of my people. So there's, there's also another problem with young people getting into politics, which, of course, has been the issue that if a young man decides that he wants to get into politics, how he goes about things are quite different, how he speaks and all of that are uh, very different. Once you get into the office, it becomes a different ballgame altogether because there, there's a certain system that is, is there to indoctrinate you into being the different person that, you, you know, you've been before you got, you got into, uh, into politics. What do you make of that? My brother, if your person is anything to go by, then I think that it is a human problem and not a young people problem. People changing happens at all levels of life. And pastors change. Imams could change. Lawyers change. Bankers change. It does not mean they are, they are changing because they are young or they are old. It is a human problem. A problem. But same people who have gone to certain heights and they have changed. We've seen people who have gone beyond those heights and they have not changed. So for me, I think that it's a matter of perspective. And there are people who get to the radio, and by the mere fact that their voices are heard on the radio, um, they go walking on a high horse. But there are people who are celebrated journalists on TV, and they don't do half of that. So for me, it's a, it's a human problem, and it's something that should be personalized. We have seen politicians who are doing so well, we have seen politicians who are not doing so well. And so it's a matter of who is involved. For me, wherever I've been, wherever I've said, my track record is available for everyone to see. I have been diligent in service, I have been proactive, I have been hard with wherever I've been. And so I think that if you ask me, I would like um, George Sapon to be charged with what George Sapon has been able to do over the years and by the standard that is generally accepted. But that general 
thing of okay, some young people have failed, so and then uh, it means that every young person will fail. I, I don't, I don't believe so. Samuel Dimo was young when he was with most media, but did his work so well, and he was uh, moved to BBC. Uh, did he fail? He did not. He was a young person. Did he achieve it because he was a young person? I bet to that he achieved it because he put a lot of hard work, a lot of effort in his craft. And I think that we saw things with Honorable Okonkono. And so it's not a matter of age or anything. It's rather a matter of what the person has committed to do. What you have done in the past and based on what you can extrapolate or judge what you can do when given them. So for me, I've served my party, I've served my people. If you go to KNS, I served as a teaching assistant in 2013 and 2014. Who is that? I said voluntarily at the smart business in today, but I did a lot of things that these are things that I've done over the years. So for me, I think it's not a matter of whether you are old or young, but it's a matter of how diligent you want to serve your people. How positive are you this weekend on Saturday? Extremely positive. I've gone around my first year's election areas. I have 1,056 um, delegates who are going to vote on Saturday. I've gone around, I've campaigned. Uh, Tomorrow, God willing, I'm meeting my constituency executives and lecture record this again. After which, I'll do my second round of tours. And I'm hopeful. The victory comes from the um, from the Almighty to God. I've asked for um, the horses and the chariots. We are usually prepared, but the victory comes from God. I'm counting on God just that I was able to uh, be placed on number one. And by the end of the day, I should still remain number one. And I'm counting on God to still um, need to uh, have that victory cemented effortlessly. You know, in um, Proverbs 49, because the Bible says something that if a righteous man falls authority, then he should rejoice. And if a wicked person um, falls onto power, oftentimes the people are in vision. I am offering myself as somebody who is ready to sacrifice, who is ready to do all that it takes to ensure that the welfare of my people is well saved. That is. So, my brother, and if you have any word you can put in for me, do so because a vote for your suffering is a vote for competence. A boost of the suffering is a vote for diligence in service. A boost of the suffering is a great for humility in service. I'm number one on the ballot today, and I'm counting on all the legitimate people that have out to do me the honor to give me their mandate so I can serve them diligently. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Mm, for once, I thought that um, Bible quotation was referencing your, uh, uh, the, the certain MP, uh, William. Uh, Edu, uh, oh, no, I, I don't know. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, oh, that Numa has a song where he says, It's Ankwa Numa. He makes a description of the Ankwa Numa bit where he literally says that I am doing what I can when it's time I will leave for others to come. So, so, so do, you think, do you think this is the time for William, William to actually exit so he makes way for you? No, he, he has actually brought his service to an end. He did not file to contest in the election. Yeah, but I'm asking that, do you think that this, this was the appropriate time for him to exit? You see, there, there are things that only the person involved can give the right answer. I can assume that mm. Honorable Riku, after 12 years, probably feels that it is time to um, give way for others to come in to continue what he has done, the good job that he's done, so that he can also focus on other areas. Of course, when I'm elected um, on 27th of January, which is this strategy, I will not be empty for life. I will not be empty for life. There will come a time that I will also bring my service to an end for others to continue. You know, governance is a continuum. So somebody takes it to this point, another person moves it to the other point. And that's the, that's the beauty of democracy. So I, I, in my opinion, I believe that Honorable Rebu, who has served with people for 12 years as member of parliament, eight years as deputy minister for energy, has done so well for this country. He's contributed to the progress of this country because of the reasons why our lives are on and we have not had to go through a period of doing so for another five years or so. And so I believe that and um, he served his country well. If he feels that it's time to bring his service to an end, um, I think that um, it's, it's, it's something that the rest of us can only commend him for his good service to his people. And when given the nod, we also give the assurance that we take it up from where he left it and try to do um, what we can and probably go beyond because, I mean, the expectation is that where you take it from, you should go beyond and not just maintain the status quo. So um, that's what I would say. I think that he's done his work, he's done well. And so when I'm also giving the Lord, I'll take it up away with that and try to move it a much higher. You face other people this weekend. Uh, after that, the big, bigger picture is uh, the elections, the general elections itself, where you'll be meeting the opposition uh, party and all that. Is this a sort of test run you're trying to undertake to ensure that you're able to cement yourself for the coming years? Or it's something that you strongly believe that even after this uh, primaries, me meeting the opposition in, in, in elections in December will, will still be a victory for you? God willing, when I'm elected on 27th, 
definitely I'll be elected on uh, January 7th as well. But if you have a traditional strong vote up to the NPP. And for me, I'm not just an NPP person. If you come to the conscience, you realize that I'm a bit more blind. I'm somebody who moves the entire use of the area I follow. So my ability to win votes is uh, undeniable and it is unquestionable. As for the votes, I will win them. I have promised my people that I will increase the votes of the NPP by at least 10,000 votes. And that's exactly what I'm doing today. I'm going to win on 27th and go ahead to win on 7th January so that I will increase the votes margin of the NPP such that we will be able to do the race for Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya to take over the race of government and continue with the good work of Nana and the Party. Just up on, uh, I wish you the very best for this weekend and hopefully we'll get to talk again when uh, that is done and moving forward into the bigger picture in uh, December uh, 7 as well. And uh, I wish the people of uh, Kwabre, if you have Kwabre South, the very best as well. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm sure um, the victory will be as glorious as how you are looking when your house is and your car and all of that. But yes, we'll bring you home. We'll bring you home. <laughs> Very well. I'll be looking forward to that, my brother. Thanks a lot for making time with us this morning here on the show, and uh, we hope to talk again soon. All right, so that's uh, John Sapon over there, who's looking forward to becoming the MP for Efija Kwabre South, uh, and uh, he's telling us exactly what he wants to do when he eventually is able to get the nod to lead the people of uh, Efija Kwabre South. And, well, as you may be aware, uh, the certain MP is actually not filing, and so... It means that uh, he may just have, you know, a few other people to contest with. But, of course, it's always good when you know that the one who has been in there for the longest and the people still believe in him and wish him, uh, you know, to be in that uh, position uh, decides that he's not going to go again. It, it, it actually increases your chances in, in a certain way. And so we're hoping that whatever it is, uh, you know, uh, whatever he wants to do for the people, they will listen to him and do what they have to do. But that's uh, our conversation. So we'll be running these diaries, you know, here on the show. Uh, as and when we're able to grab them, uh, for the benefit of uh, the people that they want to serve, we'll, we'll try and ask them a few questions for them to let us know what exactly they want to achieve with the kind of dreams that uh, they have for themselves. So there's still more coming up here on the show. Uh, we're going to have our entertainment uh, uh, for a wrap uh, this morning here on the show, so you might want to stay with us. We're back in a bit. <laughs>